Hi there everybody. In today's video we're going to look at recombinant chromosomes and the crossover value. So this is all linked to the, uh, the, uh, the idea of crossing over. Okay, so we know what crossing over is. We want to know how that affects the genotype ratio, which would then affect our phenotype ratio as well. So if we just do a very quick recap and we think about what will be happening here. So we've got here a homologous pair. Uh, one chromosome has the uh, two dominant alleles at the gene loci for A and B. And the other has the recessive alleles at the gene loci for A and B. So what we're ending up with here, we're just showing how we end up with our gametes. And we end up with these two uh, gametes would have the same combination of alleles. So big A, big B, and then here, little a, little b. So these are linked genes. And then if we think about what would happen during crossing over, so if crossing over occurs, then we would end up with new combinations because of this uh, part here, which ends up swapping over. So these parts are the non sister chromatids. So we end up with our gene loci being, um, being unlinked. And as a result of that, what we end up with in our gametes when crossing over has taken place is we end up with uh, this is the same as the, uh, the gamete, the, the chromosome that you end up with when there's no crossing over. But here we have a new allele combination and here we have another new allele combination. So the chromosomes that you get here, which have been formed as a result of crossing over, they are called recombinant chromosomes. Recombinant because the uh, genetic material has recombined. What we can also see is that even though crossing over might take place, um, if we look at these two which are uh, the same, the chromosomes and the allele combinations are the same, even though crossing over occurs, we still get one out of four of our gametes with that same combination that we got over here. And then again, one out of four will have the same combination here. So these combinations, this one and this one, these are called um, the parental chromosomes or the parental class. And then we can see that we've got this one and then this one, which are new. They are the recombinant chromosomes. OK, so this is the, the same image that you saw before. We want to know now what the crossover value is. So what does this mean, the crossover value? Well, if we think about the, um, the gametes in terms of the ratio of the different gametes that we're producing, so we're looking at the, the different chromosomes that we have in our gametes, then we can see that out of all the possible combinations, if we look at um, situations where crossing over has and has not occurred, then we've got these parental classes will occur in a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you remember what we said before, so these came from individuals where crossing over did not occur, and these ones came from individuals where crossing over did occur. And then again, if we look at our recombinant chromosomes, then we'd see again that they are in a one-to-one -one ratio with each other as well. But because crossing over doesn't happen as often as crossing over not happening, uh, you don't end up with this occurring as much compared to this. So if you were to actually look at the percentage, so if you imagine that you're doing, uh, you're crossing two individuals which have this particular genotype and you're crossing them multiple times and then you get lots and lots of offspring and you look at the genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring. In some of those individuals, they would have been uh, produced and crossing over would have happened when the gametes that formed them were made. But out of all of those offspring, you would find that there are not as many of them which have got these recombinant, uh, the phenotypes that result from these recombinant chromosomes. And that's because crossing over doesn't happen very often. So if we actually did took an example, what we might see, for example, is you might see that there were 
44% of the offspring had this parental class and then 44% were in this parental class. The parental class really refers to the phenotype and we're just showing here that this would be one phenotype and this would be another phenotype. And then what we might see as a result therefore is that 6% would be present for each of these recombinant class phenotypes. That's just one example, but you will nearly always see that you have a much higher percentage in the parental class compared to the recombinant class. So the crossover value, oh actually hang on, sorry, the crossover value itself is the number you get by adding these two together. So these will always be the same, they're in a one-to-one -one ratio. So the crossover value in this example is 12%. And the crossover value can tell us something about the gene loci. Because if you imagine, let's take a chromosome, which has got this gene loci, so gene A is up here, and then another gene loci for gene B is down here. Now these two gene loci are quite far apart. So the distance is almost an entire chromatid. Crossing over only has to happen in one place in between these two to separate those two linked genes. So there's a large possibility that crossing over could separate these two linked genes. Crossing over could occur anywhere along this chromatid. But if we take, if we say that, that same example, uh, that same chromosome, so here's gene loci A again, let's say there's a third gene that we're interested in, which is gene C, but gene C is much closer together with great gene A. So the distance between these gene loci is much smaller than the distance between these gene loci. That means it's much less likely that these two gene loci are going to get separated during crossing over. Because crossing over might happen here, might happen here, crossing over might happen down here, down here. The only place where crossing over will separate genes A and C is in here. So probability-wise, there's a lot less likelihood of that happening. So if you looked at offspring and calculated the uh, crossover value for these genes, it would be much smaller because it's much less likely that crossing over would separate them. So you would not get many of the offspring with the recombinant class of chromosomes when you've got the gene loci close together. If you've got the gene loci far apart, they're much more likely to be separated, which means it's more likely that you'll end up with recombinant chromosomes, and then you will be more likely to get offspring with those recombinant phenotypes. So the smaller the crossover value is, the closer together the gene loci are.